Income tax 2023-2024. Self-employed health insurance deduction. Get ready and some coffee because if taxes were an animal, the government would surely be a leech. Ew, get it off. Most of this information can be found in the instructions for Schedule 1 section of the Form 1040 Instructions Tax Year 2023, which you can find on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on Line 2, Adjustments to Income, which you might hear called Above the Line Deductions, possibly Schedule 1 Deductions. Remembering that the first half of the income tax formula is basically a funny income statement. Most income statements statements having income minus expenses resulting in net income here we have income minus various deductions getting to taxable income noting for taxes deductions are good therefore we're always looking to increase the possibility of having more deductions also recognizing the difference between the above the line deductions or adjustments to income and the below the line deductions which are the greater of either standardized or itemized deductions one difference being that if you qualify for an adjustment to income above the line deduction then you don't have to clear the hurdle of the standard deduction to get a benefit from it this is the first page of the form 1040 we're looking at line 10 adjustments to income from schedule one here is the schedule one part number two adjustments to income we're focused on line 17 self-employed health insurance deduction all right so we have line 17 self-employed health insurance deduction first thing to note here is it says self-employed so as we have seen in the past oftentimes if you're going from tax preparation for an employee which will typically be driven by w-2s and then going to self-employed or some kind of business income typically a schedule c or possibly some other entity like pass-through entities s corporations partnerships llc's or or a c corporation that's going to increase the complexity of the return making it a requirement to have at least some bookkeeping skills typically because there will often be uh, adjustments in that way and then there's also often increases in the complexity of the return as well as possible opportunities for tax planning so as a tax preparer the question is do you want to be taking on more complex returns where you have schedule c and self-employment business which typically means you're going to be doing more complex returns possibly more bookkeeping and possibly able to charge more per return or are you specializing in fewer returns making less profit margin but be able to crank out more returns first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like this cpa thinking cap for example cpa thinking cap you see what we did with like with the letters and this cpa thinking cap is not just for cpas either anyone can and should have at least one possibly multiple cpa thinking caps why because based on our scientific survey of five people all of whom directly profit from the sale of these cpa thinking caps wearing this cpa thinking cap without a doubt according to the survey increases accounting productivity tenfold yeah at least yeah, apparently the hat actually channels like accounting energy from the quantum field ether directly into your head allowing you to navigate spreadsheets faster it's kind of like how in like the matrix when neo learns kung fu or at least that's what the scientific survey saying so get one because the scientific survey participants could really use some extra cash. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Now also note that if someone is a W-2 employee, that they could also have a Schedule C business on the side and possibly still have access to some benefits from a W-2 employee situation which might be a little bit easier because they might not have a whole lot or very complex 
bookkeeping situation because they have a fairly basic business and their main income is coming from the W-2 employee wages. If, however, their entire income is coming from a business, then, then it's likely that you're gonna have more of these kind of planning type things that are gonna come up. One of them possibly being the employed health insurance, the, the self-employed health insurance deduction because uh, it's historically been the case that health insurance has kind of been tied in with the employer. It used to be the case that many people actually worked for the same company their entire lives, right? And then, and then it was, not, it was uh, routine typically to have the health insurance tied to the company in part because the insurance premiums for a grouped plan uh, sometimes could be cheaper than if you bought the health insurance yourself. So just for that reason itself, there could be uh, a link be from the employer that could provide a benefit uh, to the employees. But these days, people are switching jobs a lot more routinely, and uh, a lot of people might have work on the side or might be self-employed in some way. If you're self-employed, then the question is, well, do I get a benefit for my self-employed health insurance? Because when it was linked to an employer situation, if it was an employee employer situation, there could be some link between that. So that historical link has kind of leaked over once again to the self-employment situation where the IRS is trying to mirror a similar kind of structure on a self-employed individual. Okay, so you may be able to deduct the amount you paid for health insurance for yourself, your spouse, and your dependents. The insurance can also cover your child who was under age 27 at the end of 2023, even if the child wasn't your dependent. So how would you deduct this? Well, it would be dependent upon you being the self employed, uh, self-employed typically, not deducted on the Schedule C, but rather on, as we saw, the Schedule 1. Why wouldn't it be deducted on the Schedule C, you might ask? Note that the bottom line of the Schedule C will be the thing that you're going to have income tax calculations on, but also that self-employment tax calculation. So the fact that it's not deduction deducted on the Schedule C means you might still be subject to paying the equivalent of payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare, but you'll get the federal income tax benefit because it'll be deducted on the Schedule 1. Okay, a child includes your son, daughter, stepchild, adopted child, or foster child defined in who qualifies as your dependent and the instructions for Form 1040. So we looked at that in a prior presentation. One of the following statements must be true. You were self-employed and had a net profit for the year reported on Schedule C, or F. So you're self-employed. And so, so that would typically mean you have a Schedule C or possibly a Schedule F and you didn't have a loss, right? If you had a loss, then you lost money. The IRS is all, already skeptical of people taking a loss against other incomes such as W-2 income or other income uh, possibly. So you might not get a benefit in the case of there's a loss. In other words, the IRS in some cases will restrict the amount of deductions you're going to get to 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 break even or have a zero on your net income and not go below in a loss situation. So you were a partner with net earnings from self-employment. So if you're in a partnership situation, then typically you have to file another return, a partnership return, but it's not actually kind of a separate legal entity because it's not like a separate corporation. Generally, you could have an LLC, which is kind of like an in-between world. But the idea of a partnership is that the income still flows through to your tax return, possibly with a K-1 form, and is still oftentimes subject to self-employment, which means you might have be in basically the same situation where you might be able to take the deduction for the health insurance in situation. So you used one of the optional methods to figure your net earnings from self-employment on Schedule SE. So that's going to be a calculation that we've seen summarized in the past in software. We're going to obviously have to pay our self-employment tax, which is Social Security and Medicare, the self-employed equivalent of payroll taxes in essence. You received wages in 2023 from an S corporation in which you were a more than 2% shareholder. So S corporation 
another complication in the in this situation because these are passed through entities the s corporation typically trying to get the best of both worlds having some separation of a separate legal entity possibly for litigation purposes possibly for benefits with regards to uh the, the calculation of things like payroll taxes but it's still a flow through uh entity that's going to also uh flow through to the individual tax return so we're not going to dive too too much deeper into the s corporation and uh and partnerships here it's a whole nother world uh in and of itself but as a tax preparer that's going to be one of the questions you have once again do you want to take on those more complex returns because there's a whole separate return that you have to file and have a flow through uh, situation and or do you just want to do the individual side of things possibly allowing someone else to do the s corporation returns and the partnerships but still be able to take the k-1s and put them into the tax return in which case you might have to understand some more about about this flow through entities and the consequences on things like health insurance so health insurance premiums paid or reimbursed by the s corporation are shown as wages on the form uh, w-2 because uh, an uh, s corporation still has to has to uh, pay wages in the form of w-2s to the employees okay so the insurance plan must be established under your business your personal services must have been a, a material income producing factor in the business if you are filing schedule c or f the policy can be either in your name or in the name of the business that oftentimes is a, like a sticking point that can be a little bit scary in terms of setting up the policy should it you know how how what's the name that we should be putting on the policy to make sure that we're in compliance with our tax benefits so if you are a partner the policy can be either in your name or in the name of the partnership uh, you can either pay the premiums yourself or your partnership can pay them and report them as guaranteed payments if the policy is in your name and you pay the premiums yourself the partnership must reimburse you and report the premiums as guaranteed payments this is getting a little bit into the weeds in terms of the bookkeeping for different types of entities which i don't want to you know go into in too much detail at this point in time mainly focusing in on a, a schedule c sole proprietor business kind of situation so if you are a more than two percent shareholder in an s corporation the policy can be either in your name or in the name of the s corporation so you can either pay the premiums yourself or the s corporation can pay them and report them as wages so you have this kind of interplay in the situation with the s corporation note that instead of having the self-employment tax basically flow through to you so you have to calculate self-employment tax you're going to have to pay the social security and medicare by basically treating yourself as an employee of the s corporation and then you'll and so that means you're going to have a w-2 to yourself basically kind of situation which is a little bit different than possibly you would see obviously in a schedule c where you don't pay yourself a w-2 or even in a partnership where possibly again you may not pay yourself a w-2 although you might pay other people employees w-2s in those cases so if the policy is in your name and you pay the premiums yourself the s corporation must reimburse you so you can deduct the premiums only if the s corporation reports the premiums paid or reimbursed as wages in box one of your form w-2 in 2023 and you also report the premium payments or reimburses as wages on form uh, 1040 and 1040 sr so in those situations you can see that these pass-through entities are more complex in many ways the s corporation possibly being more complex in some ways than even like a partnership type of situation so that th these are things that you have to weigh out when you're deciding if you want to be an s corporation versus a sole proprietorship uh for, for example so but if you were also eligible to participate in any uh subsidized health plan maintenance uh, by by your or your spouse's employer for any month or part of a month in 2023 amounts paid for health insurance coverage for that month can't be used to figure the deduction also if you were eligible for any month or part of a month to participate in any subsidized health plan maintained by the employer of either your dependent 
or your child who was under age 27 at the end of 2023. Uh, don't use amounts paid for coverage for that month to figure the deduction. So now we've got this kind of interplay, this kind of confusing interplay in terms of, well, what if you're in a situation where you have access to health insurance through an employer? Because you can see how this kind of grew out. What happened here is you're saying, well, health insurance typically is tied to an employer employee situation, the employee possibly having more favorable health care through the employer in part due to having group plans available. And then, well, what if people don't have the capacity to participate in the group plans because they're self-employed? Well, then the IRS wants to make this kind of deduction situation. Well, what if you, ha you had the possibility to have access to an employer uh, kind of plan? Will that restrict you from, from basically uh, doing your own health insurance and deducting it. See, these are the questions that you want to you want to go through, and you can go through a questionnaire here. Here's the questionnaire: Self-employed health insurance deduction worksheet, Schedule One, Line Seventeen. Uh, before you begin, be sure you have read the the exceptions. All right, number one: Enter the total amount paid in 2023 for health insurance covered established under your business or the S corporation in which you were a more than 2% shareholder for 2023 for you, your spouse, and your dependents. Your insurance can also cover your child who was under age 27 at the end of 2023, even if the child wasn't your dependent, but don't include amounts for any month you were eligible to participate in an employer-sponsored health plan or amounts paid from retirement plan distributions that were non-taxable because you are a retired public safety officer, which is a very special situation there. Number two, enter your net profit and any other earned income from the business, from Schedule C typically, or the K-1 income that flows through from an S corporation or a partnership possibly, uh, or uh, so from the business under which the insurance plan is established, minus any deductions on Schedule 1, line uh, 15 and 16, don't include con conservation reserve program payments. So, and then three, self-employed health insurance deduction into the smaller of line one or line two here and on Schedule 1, line 17, don't include this amount in figuring any uh, medical expense deduction on Schedule A. Okay, caution. So a qualified small employer health reimbursement arrangement, a QSEHRA, is considered to be a subsidized uh, health plan maintained by an employer. All right, let's look at an example. If you were eligible to participate in a subsidized health plan maintained by your spouse, by your spouse's employer, from September 30th through December 31st, you can't use amounts paid for health insurance coverage for September through December to figure your deduction. So Medicare premiums you voluntarily pay to maintain insurance in your name that is similar to qualifying private health insurance can be used to figure the deduction. Amounts paid for health insurance coverage from retirement plan distributions that were non-taxable because you are a retired public safety officer can't be used to figure the deduction. For more details, you can see instructions for Form 7206 on the IRS website, of course, irs.gov, irs.gov. If you qualify to take the deduction, use the self-employed health insurance deduction worksheet to figure the amount you can deduct. Exceptions. So use Form 7206 instead of self-employed health insurance deduction worksheet in these instructions to figure your deduction if any of the following applies. So this is another one of those situations we've seen in the past. Computer software will typically help, of course, with these situations because they will help to populate and go through an interview process. But one of the worksheets is going to be in the more simplified scenario. The more complicated worksheet is if these things are in play and therefore you have a bit more complex worksheet possibly. You had more than one source of income subject to self-employment tax. So when we think about self-employment, we usually think Schedule C, but what if you had multiple forms of self-employment? Schedule C, partnership income that's flowing through in the form of a K-1 or something like that, for example. Uh, you file Form 2555, I believe that's foreign uh, income situation, which always complicates things. 
you are using amounts paid for qualified long-term care insurance to figure the deduction. Use publication 974 instead of the worksheet in these instructions if the insurance plan was considered to be established under your business and was obtained through the marketplace and advance payments of the premium tax credit were made or you are claiming the premium tax credit. In other words, this is kind of like the Obamacare uh, situation, in which case you have a credit that might be applicable to you that would typically apply if you're in a lower income uh, situation where you're prepaying the premiums. Uh, and then you can have to determine if there's a credit for it when you actually file the tax return. We'll talk more about these credits uh, in a future presentation, but obviously that's going to complicate your deduction calculation because now you have this credit coming into play, <laughs> which which will which which will kind of complicate how much you paid for basically the insurance.